Hello and welcome back to yet another interesting discussion on Rust. In today's video, we'll discuss fat pointers in Rust. First of all, let's remind ourselves what exactly is a pointer. And when we say a fat pointer, is there something like a thin pointer as well? So let's discuss all of that before we dive into fat pointers and discuss why do we even need it. So let's start with what exactly are pointers. Let's say we have a x as 10 and then we have a p which has an address 2x. A pointer is a value that points to a memory location as we have in this example p points to the memory location of x and x has a value as 10. So p is not directly holding the value itself instead it's just pointing to the memory location. So a mental model could look something like this where we have a p and it points to the memory location of value which is 10. And in Rust programming language, pointers are used to avoid copying large data as we can see even in this small example as well. We are not copying the data, we are just pointing to the memory location of 10. And share access safely and enable some dynamic behavior. So those are some common use cases of pointer. Now let's move to thin pointer versus fat pointer and what exactly is this concept and how the memory layout looks like and why do we even need that so let's discuss thin versus fat pointers and even before we move to versus or fat pointers let's discuss thin pointers a thin pointer stores only the memory address something that we just discussed while discussing the pointers x is 10 and p holds the memory location to x so p here is a thin pointer similarly here as we can see in an extended example as well we have n as i32 and the value as 5 and then we have r which holds the memory location to n and then basically which is pointing to the memory location to n and n has a value which is 5 so thin pointer only stores the memory address now let's discuss fat pointer so fat pointer stores memory address and some extra metadata this is how it looks like unlike thin pointer which just stores some memory address the fat pointer stores memory address as well as some extra metadata now even before we move further and discuss more into fat pointers or look into some practical example or what exactly is this extra metadata let's discuss why do we even need fat pointers so as we know rust supports dynamically size type like slice and string slice and then we have trade objects so something like now these types do not have a known size at compile time and cannot exist alone on the stack so rust solves this problem using fat pointers so how and why exactly the size needs to be known at the compile time? Let's understand with an example. First of all, let's understand the type of this array. So the type of this array is i32 4 because it is a length 4 array. So the size is known at the compile time and stored on the stack. And memory looks something like this. So we have our array and stored values as 1, 2, three and four now let's consider for a minute we only have a thin pointer here so a thin pointer would just store the address to the zeroth index which is the first entry so it would look something like this hypothetically and it would just store the address to the first entry now from just the address rust does not know how many elements exist where the slice ends so if rust allowed this the indexing would be unsafe uh, for example uh, you know uh, that x as s of uh, 10 how would be the bounds be checked for this because there's no length information so this is unacceptable in rust because rust guarantees no out of bound access no undefined behavior in the safe code with only address the compiler cannot enforce those rules because we know rust compiler is pretty strong so it wants to ensure that 
you get the maximum safety at the runtime but if we only have a thin address or a thin pointer pointing to the first index which is basically the zeroth index of uh, your array it does not know the bounds no size known so with only an address the compiler you know cannot for enforce any of this so a thin pointer is basically insufficient for slices so that is exactly why we have fat pointer and in a fat pointer we have data pointer and some extra metadata which we just discuss right here and in this case the extra metadata that we have is length so the overall structure would look something like s as data pointer and length as the metadata so the data pointer would be pointing to the address of your array of zero which is the first index and then you have the length as four so this is what the information that your fat pointer holds about your array and then even when you try to access so let's say we have a debug and we say s of two and then we run this right here as you can see we get our value and if we try to do s of 20th as you can see the program panicked but there is no memory corruption because the bounds are known so as you can see the index out of bound the length is 4 but the index is 20. so now we understand the behavior with fat pointer for a proper index we get the value but for an invalid index we get no corrupt data but we just get out of bound uh, panic which is expected but let's see what happens in case of a thin pointer so right here we just have a thin data pointer with literally no other metadata so this is basically your thin pointer and now we try to access the value at index 0 so this is basically uh, add is basically moving your index how much places or how many places so right here we are just basically moving it zero places which is basically right now and actually let's comment this and right here as you can see we get the value one which is the correct value now let's move it three places so we move it three places and then we get the value as four as you can see right here now let's try to move it 80 places 89 places okay let's see what happens we get the value as one but we don't even have the 89th index or let's say what happens when 809 we get the value as zero so basically it's giving you some random garbage instead of properly communicating the information that the index are out of bound because it doesn't have any information about the length so it considers whatever is there in your memory on your machine maybe some garbage value some random memory it just picks it and shows it to you so let's say even if you try to access 1809 and then as you can see right here it just gives you some random garbage so that is exactly what happens when you have thin pointer accessing types whose size are not known on the compile time so i hope the difference is pretty clear and obvious and finally we have size of a thin pointer versus size of a fat pointer now since we have discussed so far pause it here for a second and maybe think on your own what would be the difference of size of a thin pointer which just holds the address versus size of a fat pointer which holds your address as well as some extra metadata so let's run it and great if you could guess it but here we have so a size of your uh, thin pointer is basically same as your original size which is let's say i32 holds eight bytes and it is exactly the same but in case of a fat pointer it just doubles down because you have your data pointer as well as some extra metadata so yes fat pointers are a bit expensive when using uh, the rust types which uh, don't have a fixed size at the compile time like just we discussed like uh, you know you have your byte slice and then you have your slice uh, string slice or uh, dynamic traits 
but it just helps you a lot as we just saw in the example so that's it for this video guys i hope you guys learned something new if you do like the video share with your friends also try out str uh, and dynamic trade as well on your end and see how fat pointers operate and if you have more questions just join my discord link in description i'll catch you guys with another interesting topic until then bye bye